What is going on, guys? Welcome back. My favorite video is to make, I tell you, because it shows our success, our wealth. This is you and me being successful. A couple months ago, I started this account, $120 in it. Didn't even invest the $400. We're almost up to $400. Big part of that is your guys' referrals. I'm a preferred Webull influencer meeting. You follow the link down in the description. You get a free stock just for joining. But if you deposit more than $100, you are going to get a stock valued at greater than 10 It's 10% back, literally, just for looking into investing. Now, the portfolio has helped us grow too. We pretty much tried to build the safest portfolio I could. We started with healthcare, obviously needed right now with CVS. We moved on to a retail with triple net lease, realty income, and an essential service with Global Water. Global Water, realty income, both monthly dividend payers are paying us every single month for holding their stock. We take a look at the pharmaceutical stocks that I've been getting from you guys using the referral links. It's a Phoenix, not a big fan of Outside of the larger players, Pfizer, AbbVie, Johnson & Johnson, holding healthcare stocks like this, they can be very volatile. So we're going to sell one and we're going to make a purchase of something I've been looking at for a long time. Hopefully get around $11 for it tomorrow. And we have some options here when it comes to farmland. First is farmland partners. A little bit less than 3% yield, a great payout ratio, but only a single year of growth and they pay quarterly. You take a look at Gladstone land, a little bit higher in terms of their cost, literally more than double, but a little bit higher yield. A little bit higher payout ratio than I'd like, but five-year growth on the actual dividends. Love to see it. Now, the big contributing factor here, this is a five-year chart of farmland. You don't have to, to know anything about stocks to see this values went from 12 down to four, but really the past couple of years, it's ran in this eight to six range. So you're not seeing growth. You take a look at Gladstone this year, even with the fall off. They've recovered and they've grown. That is what you want to see, that chart going up. So I'm buying into something that's growing in value and paying me a dividend. That is what I want to see as an investor. Both of these companies, though, do an incredible job. Whether you buy one share or 100 shares, you need to know what you're investing in. As a consumer, you should be able to look and say, this is going to earn my dollar. So Farmland Partnership, every farm they own shown on a map. Go over to Gladstone Land, same exact thing, different layout. None of these are around me, but... It's important when you look at something you want to buy into, that you know what you're getting. This is one of the biggest things for me in terms of transparency in companies I put my hard-earned money into. I want to go see 310 acres in Bladenboro, North Carolina, making blueberries and vegetables and know that's part of what's going to generate my income from this stock, whether I'm buying $100,000 or $10 of it. Now, the other part of land is, as I mentioned, I've watched these stocks for some time. I don't know that I'm going to find a better buying point. Over the past month, it's went up almost $17, down almost $15. So I don't know that we're going to see a better entry point. And if we had bought this stock prior, we would already have been getting dividend payments from them, which could offset any loss we may take if the price declines a little bit. So those are some things that I factored into this. I waited. I went ahead and tried to learn what I've seen as an investor over the past couple months and realized right now the market is high. But I also know that waiting for that inevitable collapse, it may never happen again, especially as the economy just tends to be pumped up to stabilize the entire market. And right? I'm not a fan of what they're doing, but I understand why they're doing it. And I feel like it is preventing uh, a actual collapse in the market that may ultimately happen anyway. You know, fear is going to drive a lot of this, whether we like it or not. Now, if you feel like fear is subsiding, then perhaps it might not be a good time to invest. If you feel like the reality is that fear is unjustifiably subsiding, then at that point you may want to consider investing but not buying anything. I just don't know that we're going to see what happened happen again. Although I will openly say if it does, I'll absolutely love it. I will love to see everything go back down and correct itself again because it gave us, in both cases of this account and my other account, really good buying opportunities. And you're seeing the strong stocks in the marketplace. I mean, a lot of companies, JCPenney, are gone. You know, they cannot recover from this. You're taking a look at the airline stocks, the cruise stocks. You know, you're really learning who the best in breed are if they can sustain themselves through something like this. So this is a huge stress test. Even go and look at what the banks are going through right now. It's a huge stress test for the actual companies involved. 
So you have to really pay attention to what you're doing and make sure that you're buying into companies that you believe in. You're always going to have somebody tell you that this is 100% loss of your money, fool's game. But at the end of the day, just about everyone I've ever met in life has some type of retirement plan. And every one of those retirement plans at least involves some option of stocks and bonds. So for someone to say, I'm not invested at all in the course of their lifetime is hard for me to believe. Unless you're taking every penny that you save and putting it under your bed at night and then hoping the value of the dollar doesn't depreciate. I don't know how you could not have any money invested at some point anywhere at some time. So to me, again, going back and looking at what you're trying to achieve here, growth in your dollar, whether we do that through dividends or stock growth, in this case, we've been fortunate to do both. I feel like we have a fair opportunity at Gladstone land to buy in. I wish I would have bought in two months ago because I certainly could have got a better price, but I'm willing to understand that not only do we have the $20 left over to make this investment, we're going to sell another share, which is essentially going to replenish what we've lost in terms of our cash. And I'm prepared that if these stocks drop more, just like we did with Global Water, if they drop more, we are going to go back and reinvest more because I have faith in these companies. And I would rather have one share of Gladstone land than three shares or four shares if I spent everything in terms of FPI. So we'll go with one for now, hopefully two later, and then we'll continue to watch the monthly payments come in and get us to a point where we can buy something else. Love to know what you guys think about this. Appreciate you checking it out. And you know, the next time I do an investing video will be my favorite time of the entire year. It'll be a time where we're getting dividend payments and you guys will get to see, even with a small amount of money, companies paying me just for holding their stock. Love to know your thoughts on this. Appreciate you checking out back in the week with more commentary.